series called Old Books and One Disaster, we looked at several old, beautiful books and manuscripts. However, if you read about the extensive scale of the destruction of books, you might start to wonder how it is possible that there are still old books and manuscripts left. Welcome to part 4 of the series called Old Books and One Disaster. This episode is called Why Do Humans Burn Books? One takeaway from reading two books about the burning of books is that there are at least four reasons why people destroy books, manuscripts and archives in general. One reason is because they want to punish another community. This is often done during wars. By burning libraries, one group wants to demonstrate their dominance over the other group by destroying or damaging their cultural heritage. The second reason is because certain people want to destroy evidence. That can be political leaders, but also successful authors who destroy their own archives before they die. And the third reason is because they want to radically erase the identity of another community. The dynamic is simple. Because libraries and archives contain the memory of a community, via these written documents you know who your ancestors were, how they lived, uh, what decisions they made, how and why they made their rules and laws. And by destroying their literature and historical archives, they destroy the memory of these communities. And when one destroys the memory, then ultimately one destroys the original identity of a community. And the fourth reason why people destroy books and archives is comparable to the work of a, for most of us, invisible and silent killer. The silent killing happens when governments chronically underfund libraries. I learned from the books that I read for this episode that the reason for this is that some governments and political leaders only look at the short term and don't invest in the protection of knowledge and the protection of our written heritage. Because they might not understand the vital function of libraries and archives in protecting our democracies. By chronically underfunding archives and libraries, these institutes start to disintegrate. And when this happens, then people like you and me won't use them anymore. Because they are not efficient anymore, they are not up to date and so on. This is a very critical one. Because if then people would only rely on information pushed to their mobile phones via algorithms, they lose all the benefits that libraries and archives have to offer. Starting with one very important benefit, namely having access to a diversity of ideas and information. And this is of course critical for our democracies. Now, the first book I would like to share with you is called Books on Fire. It was written by Lucien Polastron, who is a French historian. I here have the English translation of this book. It was the destruction of the National Library in Sarajevo during the war in 1992 that motivated him to write this book. The subtitle of the book is The Destruction of Libraries Throughout History. And in about 350 pages you find an overview of the extensive scale of what is mostly the deliberate destruction of manuscripts and books. After reading this history of book burnings, I started to value the content of old books and manuscripts even more. And it doesn't matter which subjects these books talk about. All these documents represent human voices. And the writers of these words wanted to store information for the future. I found it particularly painful to read in this book the examples where whole libraries were destroyed purely to break or to erase a community. And one of the examples is the systematic book destruction in the so-called New World. 
We read in Polastron's book that in the 15th and 16th century, whole libraries of the Maya, the Inca and Aztec cultures were deliberately destroyed to force upon them the beliefs and values of the old world. These communities were forced to destroy the memory of their history and by that they forever lost an important part of their identity. Another book I'd like to share with you is called Burning the Books that is written by Richard Ovenden, who is the 25th librarian of the famous Bodleian Library of the University of Oxford. This book was published in September 2020. And what I like about it is that each chapter is as an individual case study about the attack on knowledge. Each chapter brings a particular perspective on the meaning of the deliberate destruction of books and archives for a society and for humanity. The attack on knowledge is not only something from the past, but this book shows that the attack on knowledge or even what we could call the war on knowledge is happening right now. What was also an eye-opener for me while reading this book is that the author includes the importance of archives next to books and manuscripts as an essential part of human memory. He shows how the content of archives can be crucial evidence for the prosecution and conviction of war criminals or of leaders in democracies or in totalitarian regimes who misuse their power. Richard Ovenden illustrates in this book how libraries and archives are vital for the functioning of a democratic system because they are important for our diversity in thinking and our creativity but also for what he calls the integrity of our decision making. Diversity of thinking and integrity of our decision-making are topics that in our age of misinformation and fake news has become something that needs urgent revival. Of course, both books also talk about the many examples of libraries that were destroyed during wars. Both authors talk, for example, about the library behind me. What you see here is the historical building and tower of the 600-year-old University of Leuven in Belgium. Richard Ovenden even dedicates a whole chapter on it called the Twice Burnt Library, because the age-old library of Leuven burned down once in World War I and then again in World War II. The first time the library was deliberately destroyed to punish the local population for their so-called resistance to the occupation of their city. The destruction in World War I included about 300,000 books and 800 so-called incunables. These are books that were printed before 1501 so before the invention of the movable type by Gutenberg. And therefore, these are exceptionally rare books. Additionally, an estimated 1,000 manuscripts were reduced to ashes during that same fire in 1914. Then after the war, when the library was restored with the massive help of the international community, and specifically with the help of the United States, the same thing happened again during World War II. The library once more was turned to ashes. Although many valuable books and manuscripts were totally destroyed, the library was rebuilt because many nations responded with outrage to this deliberate destruction of such valuable human cultural heritage. It was also because the library of the University of Leuven was such an important symbol of human knowledge that was under attack that Belgium could count a second time on a more than generous international support, including a massive support from the United States, to establish a new library. If you want to learn more about this library's turbulent history next to what you can read in both books, 
you can also climb the five floors of the library tower. Each floor has a photo exhibition that takes you to the five significant periods in the library's history. And when you reach the outside balcony at the top, you can enjoy a unique panoramic view over this old and beautiful university city. Both authors show that the destruction of books and archives is a global phenomenon that existed since the moment humans started to write things down. However, Richard Ovenden's recent publication brings us one step further by addressing the dramatic change our society is experiencing in the way we access information and in the way we preserve information. This dramatic change runs the risk of undermining our democracies. And if you have seen the Netflix documentaries called The Social Dilemma and The Great Hack, then we get explained in detail how the current undermining of our democracies is taking place already. In these documentaries, we see the horrible effect when people start to rely only on the information pushed to them via privately owned social network apps. I strongly recommend both books because I learned about a part of history that I wasn't aware of. However, the book by Richard Ovenden made me much more aware of the importance of libraries and archives to protect our democracies and our freedom. Richard Ovenden was so kind to accept the invitation to be a guest on Bold Books and Bones, so in the next episode we will have the chance to ask him more questions about why we would care about libraries and archives in this digital age. If you like this episode, then please subscribe so you stay up to date on what's happening at Bold Books and Bones. Thank you for watching. Stay free and see you next time. Bye.